welcome back to my YouTube channel. How y'all doing? I just want to say hello to any new subscribers. And if you are new, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and click that bell, girl. Um, I'm actually in the back at the moment. I'm so sorry if um, my sound around me is very um, echoey. It's just because I'm outside. If I start sweating, nothing to worry about. It's just 40 degrees today. This, this outside here on the balcony is the only place I could film just because um, everywhere else inside is so dark just because of the apartment where it's facing against from the sun. So today I thought I'd do a story time. I was going to do another video but I feel like I have to perfect it before I release it because it's quite personal and if you do follow me on Snap I did ask you guys if you want me to do the video so I think I'm actually going to be recorded just because I didn't film it to the best ability I could. So today I'm going to do, because I'm in Dubai, I'm going to do um, a story time where I was actually stuck in Dubai for 36 hours because I had lost my passport. Okay, so um, let me just all begin. So I think it was like three years ago, me and my really good friend, Denzel, came, I should have done the video with him really, but um, he's obviously not here. It would have been funny if we did it together because it was just so crazy. But um, okay, so three years ago, I came to Dubai. I don't think it was when in this apartment, no, it was when um, basically in another house and um, we came to Dubai, I think it might have been his first time coming and I brought him along um, but we went along to see my dad because my dad lives here, if you guys don't know that and um, so basically we got a late, was it a late night flight or I think we landed sometime in the morning anyway and um, we were so excited because I'm really excited when I bring people here who haven't seen Dubai before because Dubai is so fucking beautiful and um, we decided to go to the beach because I was like oh let's not waste a day girl let's not waste a day let's go straight to the beach so I bought this bag which I bought with me it was like a Balenciaga big tote black bag and I was like yeah let's go to the beach girl anyway I didn't realize my passport was still in the bag so we're at the beach now we're chilling we got our deck chairs out we're lounging we're drinking on some cocktails it's getting a bit tired and obviously when I'm going rummaging for my bag because I'm like quite tired I'm literally rummaging going through everything and things are tipping out of the sand but I'm not taking notice so anyway um as days go on now, uh, we've been partying, we've been shopping, we've been everywhere and it comes to the last day and um, we're just about to fly off. No, we're not about to fly, it's basically the day we're going to go fly. So, um, it's super hot that day, we were flying at like 2pm um, back to London and um, we must have woke up about 10 o'clock, it was proper crazy. And then Denzel's like to me, oh Gary, I'm so hungry. Do you want to get some food? I'm going to go to Burger King because Burger King was literally a walk down the road. And at this point in time, I was really hungry, but I thought, nah, I need to pack because I think I bought so much makeup, so much clothes, and I was like, nah, I'm going to pack, babe, I'm going to pack it, so cool, so good. And then bearing in mind, um, I'm packing, I'm so stressed because when I'm packing, I'm such a shit packer just because I bring so many clothes and then when it comes to packing them up to go home, I'm like, oh my God, where do I fold this? My suitcase is not closing and I get proper aggy. So anyway, I'm packing everything, I'm putting my shoes in place, I'm putting my bags in place, I'm putting my jewelry in place and then I'm like, where's my passport? Where the hell is my passport? So I'm saying to them, the dental baby before he leaves, have you seen my passport? Like, I can't find it. So we're searching all over the house. Like, we're going crazy. Like, I couldn't find it anywhere. Like, I looked in the kitchen. I looked um, in my bag again. I looked in both bags. I checked if dental had it. I looked in my luggage. I looked everywhere where you could think of it. Even when I had to look in the street, guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. Losing your passport is, the, is probably one of the top five situations, one of the worst situations I've ever witnessed in my life. I cannot stress to you how painful it was to lose my passport. It was crazy. Um, so anyway, we're looking for the passport. I'm like, where's that passport? Where's that passport? At this time, Denzel obviously asked me if I was hungry, but he was helping me before he left. Guys, I, I hadn't eaten one thing, so I'm shaking because I'm so hungry, but obviously looking for my passport. So we couldn't find it now, so I said to them, so it's cool. Let's go and get something to eat. Um, I'm not gonna eat anything, I'm just gonna carry on looking for it. I am getting so angry, I'm shouting. I'm like, where the fuck's my passport? Where's my passport? We fly in under three hours. Flights booked every fucking thing. And not to mention, I was still working at Mac, 
Um, so I had work the next day. I'm not sure what was wrong with me or why I, why I was even allowed to book holiday even though I had work the next day. It was just, it was beyond me, it was crazy. So anyway, we're looking for the passport, we're looking for the passport, we're looking for the passport. Why is my flight, or our flight, in an hour and 30 minutes? So we had to leave and I was like, I'm not leaving until I find my fucking passport. I was literally going berserk. But obviously because Denzel was leaving, like, there's no point both of us missing our flight. But I was so upset. I was like, I was shaking, but I was literally almost in tears. But I thought, keep it together, keep it cute. You're gonna find it. And at this time I was still so hungry. So Denzel had come back with his Burger King. And I was like, girl, you're gonna have to go. I can't find my passport. There's no point both of us um, missing our flight because it's gonna be too expensive. Oh, so hot. At this point in time, it just was not cute. So anyway, um, we dropped into the passport and I was just so fucking gutted. Just because, you know, you fly with someone, you want to fly back with them, obviously. And it was just like, it was just a bit like, what the fuck? It? I could, the, the moment was just so surreal. I would kept thinking, where did we lose the passport? Did it, it all made sense. Basically, when we had gotten off the plane and went straight to the beach the first day, in my big Balenciaga bag tote, and obviously taking it out and it gotten lost in the sand. We even thought, should we go back to the beach and try and find it? But at this point, who's gonna like, who's gonna be able to find a passport in like a million yards of sand, sis? That's actually not happening. So I don't know, I just thought, oh my fucking God. First of all, when you lose a passport, where do you even go? Do you go to the embassy, do you mean the police? Let me explain to you the situation I had to go through to get my passport back. First of all guys, I'm going to say this to you now, when you go abroad, you legally don't have to bring out your passport, you do not have to bring it out. So when you go clubbing or you go to somewhere that requires a passport, you can literally print, make a photocopy of your passport and just bring it around with you because you legally shouldn't bring your passport around with you because it's such a valid document. But anywho, let me get back to on how I had to leave the country. I was stuck here but literally, I was stuck in Dubai for like three days, it was insane. So what I done was, I had to rent off Emirates and let them know that something had happened to my passport. And what they do is they can freeze your flight under certain situations. Obviously I lost a passport, so this was a high situation. So um, they froze my flight, but what happens is, on the day you want to freeze it, you have to pay like a hundred pounds difference, which is cute, it's cute, it's doable. So we asked them what the procedure was, what you have to do is, you have to report your passport stolen to the police in Dubai. <sighs> this process was so long. So we had to go to the Dubai police station. We had to report a passport stolen just in case anyone who had it. Because some people, they actually store your passport and go to a surgeon to get surgery, to get plastic surgery to look like you. So if someone who has been of my descent could have played off the, my passport picture to try and look like me. But that's a whole other situation. So we had to go to the um, police station, report my uh, passport stolen. We had to walk from Office A, Office B, Office C, seven times. You know how much times I had to get this fucking lost passport form stamped? It was, I think it was all about 14 times. Just because you have to get it stamped here to say you can get a new one, you have to get it stamped there. So it can get blocked at the passport, you have to get it stamped here. So I can get a new one for the British Embassy, you have to get it stamped there so you can prove you're the real person. You have to get it stamped there so the police guy knows you're not lying. The whole situation was literally like a nightmare on Elm Street. I didn't know what was going on, it was too much. By this point, I hadn't eaten, I was still hungry. So you can only imagine my mind and my body. I was If, if anyone had even tried to say hello to me, I would have not chewed the fuck out. Thank God my dad was there, but otherwise, I feel like I would have just died here. I would have given up on hope and literally, I'm not sure what I would have done. I would have done, had to become like a, a taxi driver or an Uber driver or something just so I could escape. Guys, it was crazy. I'm sweating. So after um, we've done this whole process of stamping all these forms, finally I can go to the British Embassy. So anyway, after getting all these forms stamped, first of all, these forms aren't cheap, boo. You have to pay to get these um, um, forms stamped. It's like 50 pounds per every two forms. So that's like, it was like 350 gone already, just on the passport form. So when you go to the British Embassy now, oh, it's so fucking long. Basically, um, you, get, you go to the embassy and 
whoever's with you, they're not allowed to come in over you because the embassy has to get my style checked, you're not allowed to bring any jewellery in there, you, um, you have to leave your phone. Because obviously you're stepping on British soil, I could be doing anything, I could be up to a madness, it could be anything. So anyway, I get there now. Cool, cool. Um, um, so again, the embassy is so fucking scary in there. You go in there and then you tell them what's happened, then what's happened to your passport, and obviously they know these things happen. So I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna sit in the waiting room. In the waiting room, there was like a wall full of missing posters that are people that have just gone missing in Dubai. It was so scary because I was with this poster about a guy who'd been missing for four years in Dubai. He'd literally come out of his hotel and he'd never seen again. And his family obviously contacted the embassy so they couldn't find him. And it's just scary to me to think that people actually come here and just go missing just because even though Dubai is beautiful and stuff and gorgeous. It's, if I was to go missing now, you would find me because it's so big and everywhere. I don't know, I can't explain. Like, navigation here isn't the best, so you can easily get lost. Because they're always developing a new road, it's actually mad. So, um, okay, we'll go to the British Embassy. I have to get a temporary passport. This temporary passport's £400. How much is this? £400. This isn't even a new passport, babes. So when you get this passport, it's it's just basically a passport to get you from Dubai to London. When you get to London, they'll take the temporary passport off you and then it's gone. You have to get a whole new passport, £430. So obviously I'll have travel insurance, so that's one thing. When you go abroad now, I have learned. Always get travel insurance, always. It's just, make sure it's a good one. Not even the post office one, because that one's shit. Make sure it's one with your bank. Make sure it's a really, really good one because you're not sure what's ever going to happen. And um, obviously, I paid to get this passport. It was a proper long process. I was in the embassy by myself because you're not allowed to go in with anyone. I was in the embassy for about two, maybe two to three hours, just so they could prove it was me. They did checks on me, my address, where I worked, where I lived before, my mom's maiden name, my dad's maiden name, my blood type, who I've slept with. That no, was joking. <laughs> but you know the whole drill. And I finally got my temporary, my temporary passport after three days. It felt like I was in Armageddon. Like, it just felt like a whole lifetime. And I finally was able to just, oh, I was finally able to leave Dubai. I've never been so happy to be going home in my life just because I had to bring my manager to let her know what happened. And obviously, they were deducting this at my holiday. I was like, what the fuck? So, anyway, uh, when I get to the Dubai airport now, oh, so anyway, um, I, I book a flight, a nighttime flight, not rushing, all cool. I get to the airport, I'm just about to, my luggage has gone through, about to go through passport control. The guy says, you can't leave the country. What? I'm sorry now? What? Did you say, you can't leave the country? This form hasn't been stamped, so you need to go. He told me to go to this area that was basically in the airport, but it was in the other area of the airport, so I basically had to, um, drive of 10 miles to this other part of the airport so I can get this form stamped. I honestly wanted to die. I've never, no, honestly, I I wanted to literally slit my throat and just be done with it because, first of all, my dad had already dropped off. So how am I walking to this other part of the airport, please, which you can only access by car. So I literally my dad going, stop the fucking car. I need to get this thing stamped, please, help me, please. I was just crying, basically. So obviously, by then, he hadn't gone so far, so he came back, I was able to get this form stamped, and then they finally let me through, guys. I was fine. When I got on that plane, I didn't even care if I was fed. I didn't care if I, was got, had, I had to go, um, go seven hours without going to the toilet. As long as I landed in England, and I was just on British soil, I would not care. I just... When I got there, I was, I've never, you know what, you know the, the word drained? I knew that, you, you don't know what the word drain even means after this experience is. It was just uncanny, it was diabolical, it was nuts, it was automatically insane. That's what that situation was. It was just, I remember, even explaining this story to you now, I've, I've just gone so, because that effort is just scaring me. It was just too much. It was the story was just too much. So the lesson of the story time is, guys, photocopy your passport. Um, 
never bring it out with you and always get travel insurance and just make sure you know what your passport is. But thank you guys for listening to this story time. If you guys want a Dubai vlog or something, let me know because I'm not sure if you guys, you know, want a vlog. I've recorded a few bits, but I'm not sure. Every time I'm here, I never really feel like vlogging just because I come here so much. But if you guys want to vlog, comment down below and give this video a thumbs up if you want more story time. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you guys for watching.